preparation and practice, I think steps one and two are the, are the most fundamental and most important steps. Okay, let's look at number three, question three. How long does it usually take for someone to, per, to form a first impression on you? First impression is how long? One second. One second. <laughs> Any advance on one second? Less than a second. Do I hear? Yeah. Less than a second. Less than a second. Ooh. Well, I, I read less than five seconds. Uh, it depends on the person. Yeah, I mean, a first impression, less than five seconds. So, step number three, the first impression. And, um, you know, a lot of this is just common sense. But again, I think it's like you have a mental checklist. Uh, be on time. You know, I, was, uh, I tend to arrive very early for things that I have to do. But there's no harm in arriving. It's better than arriving late. If you arrive early, review your notes, or walk around, have a coffee, or whatever. Um, I had a, my last boss um, always said his first impression, and don't forget some interviewers have weird in idiosyncrasies, they're, they're not always the, the kind of doing it from a manual. My, my ex boss said, I always look at somebody's shoes. If they're neatly polished, then I know they're organized. So, you know, whatever, you know, dress sense, be conservative, but be... That's why I got fired. <laughs> um, you know, create a good first impression. One of the things that we actually do in the interview sensei is in the role play, is come in and shake hands. You know, and I think a good firm handshake, good eye contact, and um, an introduction um, is, is essential. Nerves are apparently all of the people I've ever interviewed. You know, but to overcome nerves or to use nerves as a focal point for good, I think if you've prepared and practiced, then you know you're going to give it your best shot. Okay? So the first impression, I think, is very, very, very important. Okay, next question. Think of a success story in your professional career. How would you explain that? Has anyone kind of got a good success story they could just very quickly summarize? I have one. Okay. Okay. Um, I went to, I was working at SoftBank and yeah. um, we had done an M&A deal uh -huh. and we had acquired a company in, um, in Helsinki, Finland. Okay. And this was, um, some time went on and relations were kind of getting further and further away between the Japanese company and the and the guys in Finland. Um, so much so that at uh, one winter night, I got a call that they were going to, the, the CEO of Finland was going to leave mm -hmm. the company. So I flew out there and I spent the next um, week or so working on them and got them all to uh, uh, basically stay on board. And so that was a, it was a tough thing. It was probably, it was, because basically, there was a lot of things under the bridge that they were ready to go. And uh, so basically working with them, selling them on the idea of what we could build together, mm -hmm. and then okay. getting them on board. Good story. Good story. And I think this emphasizes this point. Play to your strengths. And I think what the story you just told, um, one of the things I think is good to prepare is a success story. And I kind of... Um, learned that there's a good little acronym for this, which is STAR, S-T-A-R. I don't know if you've ever heard of this before, but you've just done that very well. The situation, this was the situation, right? This was my task, the T. This was the action I performed, and R, this was the result. And I think that if you prepare this ahead of your interview, then it's a really good thing to have up your sleeve when somebody says, what are your strengths and weaknesses? Tell me of a successful story uh, or a task that you've implemented in your position. Okay? So play to your strengths. Know what you have to offer. I'm amazed there's so many Japanese candidates that I give the interview practice to. They're so modest. You know, invented the 56K modem might be kind of tucked away under other information. You know, bring out your strengths and play to them. The other thing which I, I mentioned earlier was the trees. 
I think the classic question, what about your strengths and weaknesses? I think always with three strengths. You know, I've, I've got good communication skills, uh, I get on well with people, and, and I've, I'm a good results oriented manager. And you give one weakness. You know, if you're going to balance it, don't balance it in a negative way. So play to your strengths. Okay, moving on. Next one. What would you consider to be your main weakness? Choose the best response from the three options below. A, B, C. A, B, C. <laughs> That's the truth. Um, who thinks A? I'm not so good at speaking <laughs> Japanese, but I am going to a language school to try and improve. Who thinks A is the best response? Okay. Who thinks B is the best response? I'm not a good man manager. No? And C, I work too hard and expect others to do the same. Okay, so split between A and C with B and Erna. Well, again, the question, the answer I get most from my Japanese interview candidates is C, I work too hard and expect others to do the same. I would say this isn't a weakness. I would say it's evading the question. And I think there are three ways you can answer this question. One is overemphasis. You know, I'm not a good man manager. I mean, this is an interview. You're trying to show how good you are, not how poor you are. You don't have to tell lies, but don't emphasize something which you consider to be a weakness. Then you have evasive. I'm a perfectionist. I work too hard and expect others to work hard as well. I just don't think that as an answer. And HR people who hear this over and over and over again actually think it's a very weak answer. So, admit to a small weakness. I mean, this is not a, a heart-wrenching psychological sort of discussion. Admit to a small weakness. Well, my Japanese ability could be a bit better. And then show how you're overcoming it. But I'm going to language school to improve. Or I'm taking a policy. Okay, so I think that is much better in the way of um, being honest. So avoid negative statements, but if you're going to admit to a weakness, show how you're overcoming it, not dwelling on it. <coughs> I think the same thing as well goes to why you want to leave your present job. Avoid negative statements about your present job, about your previous employers. It just creates a bad impression on you. Maybe you've had terrible problems. I think something like 70% of all people who <coughs> resign actually do so because dissatisfaction with their direct manager. So, but if you admit that, then po possibly the person interviewing you will think you're a troublemaker or not a desirable employee or whatever. So I think avoid that kind of negative feedback. And also they might say, what's your success story? They might also say, tell me something where things didn't go so well. So if you're going to have a failure story, or something that didn't go so well. I think the emphasis should be on what you learned from, rather than the actual mistake that you may or may not have made. Okay, next one. How would you respond to this question, number six? What if I asked you to work on a project with a colleague you didn't get along with? One of these kind of behavioral questions, or like a scenario question. Any? Any ideas how you'd respond to this? <coughs> look for some more information about the situation. Okay, <coughs> look for some more information about the situation. Okay, uh, I would ask the question, are these colleagues task or relationship oriented? Okay, task or relationship oriented people. Okay, yeah. I mean, you'd ask the interviewer this. Yeah. I, I actually think, again, it's... I, this doesn't really match exactly, but listen to the interviewer. What does the interviewer really want to hear? Yeah, a response which is positive and which will get the job done. So I think that what you're saying is actually correct. I mean, you're taking a sensible and, and logical approach. But I think what the interviewer wants to hear is something like, um, well, you know, as long as we can get the job done, then I think that's fine. Or something to that effect. You know? I mean, that's a little bit too short, maybe, and maybe not considered. But what does he want to hear? You know, think about that. Listen very carefully, and what does he want to hear? Um, I would say don't lie to the interviewer, but if it's a difficult question, 
that maybe you don't want to give a direct answer to, and maybe circumnavigate and see what his real purpose is.